students welcome to scholar as current affairs classes let's get into the classes right away the first article is about inflation and rbi's role in controlling inflation so this is related to your gs3 paper and what has happened let's try to understand what has happened actually the mpc that is monetary policy committee of reserve bank has actually not changed the repo rate okay they haven't changed uh, made any changes to the repo rate and they have retained the old repo uh, old percentage of 4 percentage okay so uh, regarding this we will try to understand how this has an impact in inflation for that we need to understand about the inflation there are basically two types of inflation one is the retail inflation and next is the another one is the core inflation uh, we will get into the core, core inflation later so inflation is nothing but rate of change in prices for given set of items any set of items let's take into that and see how much change is happening in the prices of those items and in india the retail inflation is actually calculated using cpa that is consumer price index and this index actually records changes in prices of which items we have said that it would be a given set of items so this cpa actually measures the items related to a sample family budget item okay for instance food fuel whatever we use at home whatever we spend on those are the things even this includes sin products like the sin tax kind of uh, tobacco and intoxicants so this measure is based on a weighted average not all the items are given the same weightage the item would have different priorities accordingly the weightage is being given let's say if food is a priority then it would have more weightage over other things tobacco and intoxicants so that is how it would be and cpi based retail inflation is actually measured on a monthly basis students this is very important they can ask a question prelims question on this so make a note of it and this is published by ministry of statistics and program implementation mospi okay this is also very important but one thing that you have to notice if inflation is noted for uh, measured for month of november it would be released published in the month of december the subsequent month so that is how it works okay so in this inflation where does rbi actually come into picture so rbi is in, interested with the work of monetary policy conducting monetary policy okay and the primary objective of this monetary policy is to maintain price stability why do we need price stability because for a growth to sustain it is it is a precondition and with this intent the rbi act 1934 was even amended in 2016 to provide a statutory basis for this process inflation at inflation flexible inflation targeting framework was brought into picture how what is the flexibility that we are talking about under this framework the center and the rbi would actually review and agree upon certain specific inflation targets every 5 years and within that target see this is very important student so this 5 years is very important make a note of it and every 5 years they will be reviewing the existing inflation target and accordingly set the target for next 5 years okay so as uh, according to this framework right now 4 percentage has been set as the cpa inflation target with bandwidth of minus and plus 2 percentage okay that is the upper limit would be 6 percentage and the lower limit is 2 percentage and this inflation target this 4 percentage inflation target has been set for the period of 2016 to 2021 there is also certain suggestions that rbi should not only consider the existing inflation but would also have to consider the inflation expectations okay of the consumers so it's not just about the actual reality but the expectations of consumers as well as the financial market so that they can use the monetary tool efficiently to control the inflation with the within the target range that is the 4 4 percentage plus or minus 2 percentage okay right now in the economy the inflation is too high but still rbi wants to adopt an accommodative policy stance accommodative policy stance nothing but a liberal policy stance where the credit availability is enough to recover the economy itself because of covid the economy needs right now it is still fragile it has to be recovered for that a sustained policy support is required and that can be done only by or only through rbi's monetary policy but 
why should it be an issue why should faster inflation be a concern even see actually faster rate in inflation means the price of household items are rising quickly that is what it indicates and though inflation affects everyone it will affect the poor the most because the low income sections are so vulnerable to this variation in the inflation okay and persistent high inflation actually even deprives these section of people the staple items that is like even the basic items like onions potatoes these even these basic necessities nutrient necessities are deprived for them so this would they would they would be forced to actually reduce either they will have to reduce the consumption of these nutrients essential nutrients or they will altogether give it away so that they can spend it on other essential items that they are they have a priority on a long run this not only will affect the low income section of the people but also other segments of the population basically even including the elderly people who are living with a fixed income because these are not inflation resistant okay and so this basically would undermine the consumptive capacity of the whole society and also would affect the economic growth so this is what about retail inflation so we saw what retail inflation is how it is measured and what are the impacts and wh- how rbi figures into this picture and how they try to control it now we will try to understand about few points about core inflation so core inflation is a measure of inflation similar to cpi but what it does is it just excludes some of the volatile temporarily volatile uh, items from the measurement of inflation for example the basically the food and fuel what it happens that there would be more volatility volatility in these two items that's why these two are removed so that a proper idea about the inflation a proper picture about the inflation trend can be understood and this this would also help to set the policy rates in the economy and also the cost to push measures currently in the current scenario the cost to push cost push pressures are affecting the core inflation and this could actually firm up the economic activity okay so until the demand push up the inflation would be increasing that is what it is trying to convey so students this is about the inflation and rbi article we will move on to the next article so the second article is about cash census this article is related to your gs2 paper and uh, the what is in the news actually about it is that the tamil nadu government is planning to appoint a commission to actually formulate formulate a methodology to collect caste wise particulars okay of tn population that is only specific to that particular state but a similar action has been uh, census has been conducted by the center through its socio economic caste census 2011 but this census did not disclose the caste findings of this census uh, caste data about this census public even karnataka did the same exercise similar exercise and they also did not disclose the caste uh, exercise to the public caste census to the public this being the case let's try to understand about the caste census in india see actually the uh, census of uh, census of india 19 until 1931 they were collecting caste details but in 1941 it was given up because of two reasons one is the financial constraint and the second one is that the census operation during that period got affected because of world war 2 in addition to this even the caste census was criticized to be uh, influencing the caste system by labeling some person and what to uh, as to what caste they are belonging to it was criticized for this particular reason so they even wanted to stop this census but few data has been collected uh, under the special groups category that is special groups in the means uh, in the sense sc st and anglo indians these those categories who were treated as backward were collected for the purpose of census and after re- creating the backward commission they also started to conduct their own counts in their own states in their own methodologies that is how it has been happening but the thing is even they hadn't even the central uh, backward commission did not publish though they collected the data they did not compile and publish it to the public so that the same has been happening for a long so this is about the caste census and we will see about something about scc 2011 see it is a exercise done to collect both socio economic status as well as the caste status of various communities 
so it is different this SECC is different from census 2011 because the SECC and these are the general census is basically conducted in a month but the caste census is conducted over a long period of time the SECC actually has two components one is the component that deals with the economic conditions of rural and urban households and the second is the caste census while the economic conditions were actually released to the public the caste data was not released and the reason the government did not release was two things one was that the data was considered politically sensitive okay and the second thing was that it would this such if the data is released there could it could actually provoke the dominant and powerful caste who might find that their projection their understanding of their population their their strength in the population is not a, as high as they have claimed so for these two reasons for these two apprehensions they did not release the caste data this caste census is also legally important because the supreme court has been questioning the basis for reservation levels see the various states follow various reservation levels and the supreme court is questioning for instance uh, Tamil Nadu follows 69% has 69 percentage reservation so various states follow various type of uh, reservation policies and supreme court is questioning the basis for such policies and even in one judgment they say, said that quantifiable data is needed to justify the presence of a caste in a backward class list you cannot keep adding any caste to the backward class the supreme court has some sort of data so that it would act as an evidence for even it would also prove their uh, evidence as for under representation of those caste in services in public services periodical review of community wise list were, was also demanded by the court so this was as demanded because to ensure benefits that actually go to these caste doesn't get diverted to other caste or other communities who are well off so there are pros cons and challenges associated with this caste census so now you would have got an idea pros in the sense see for uh, tailoring the reservation policies i mean the reservation policy can be more rationalized so that everyone the uh, there is it can be it can ensure actually equitable re representation of all this can this is a pro of this caste census but there is a con to it because this caste census may lead to issues among sections of society which might start demanding for quotas for their groups and based on their numbers this could be a negative aspect of caste census but the major challenge would be that even to categorize the caste names and even sub caste it's very difficult because even similar sounding caste names would be uh, whether we, they do not know whether the decision to treat them as a separate caste or sub caste of a community would be a challenge okay so these are the things these are the pros cons and challenges associated with caste census and the issues that are around this caste census so students we have come to the end of this class session hope you like the class uh, for more videos subscribe to our channel visit our platform scholar.com till then happy learning bye bye